Why, hello, this is Mike Moo, and I'm back with my first notebook review in a while. This is the 2017 Samsung Notebook 9 Pro 15. You get a lot of awesome features in here for a pretty decent price. It retails $12.99 US dollars here in the States, and you get a bit of a discount if you are a student. Sold exclusively right now on Samsung.com and Best Buy. Check out the specs here. It's got a Core i7 dual core, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a discrete graphics card, and it is a two-in-one notebook, obviously with the S Pen. So 15 inches, you got a full HD screen. No, it's not 4K and it's not Retina, but the screen quality is pretty good. We'll go into a little bit more detail about that later. Um, I'm a MacBook user myself. I love Apple products and Macs. I switched uh, five years ago, but I still use a lot of PCs for work and um, they, they just have a lot more software to choose from. And one of the things I really hated about the Windows notebooks was the touchpad. And this touchpad is actually pretty good. It comes really close to being matte quality without quite being there. I want to say it's about 80 some percent there. The keyboard's actually pretty decent. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be given how thin this notebook is. And it is also backlit and there are several distinct levels that you can choose from but it actually slides all the way if you manually adjust it but if you adjust it from the, from the keyboard itself there's about four different levels. I like to say the ergonomics of the keyboard's actually pretty good. Um, it is uh, it, it, the view the visibility of the screen is excellent overall I give this really high marks if I was a MacBook user converting to Windows uh, and I wanted a 15 inch notebook I want to say this one's this one's for you you can't really beat it for the price and the features taking a quick look at the ports it's kind of unique because it has a USB-C port that you can use for charging as well but they don't give you the AC adapter for that you can get that separately you can get one that supports up to 60 watts it also only has a micro SDXC slot and two USB 3.0 slots over um, that you can use which is much better than what the MacBook Pros are currently um, doing right now the backlighting is okay and um, the key the keyboards also okay as well I find that I type better on my MacBook but I've only used been using the Samsung notebook 9 Pro for about a month so I haven't quite got used to the key layouts yet one thing I really love about this is that it, it features the Windows hello sign-in and um, it, it's fast okay Let's talk a little bit about the graphics and the screen here. I did a quick test on the monitor. It gives out a 94% of sRGB, which is pretty good. So it's pretty decent for us photographers, but it's only 71% of Adobe RGB. So it's not bad, right? Um, when you have a price point of $12.99, there's a, there's a couple limitations I got to give you, and that's going to be one of them. However, I don't have a whole lot of complaints about screen. Although that um, there is not a really great anti-glare coating on there. And I'll show you a little bit later um, in the video, near the end of the video, when I compare it with the MacBook. But, you know, the notebook is really slim. It's really lightweight. It feels really well built. It's got aluminum alloy exterior. And it look, in my opinion, it looks pretty darn good. So Samsung has been taking some notes uh, coming from uh, what the MacBook does right so um oh one thing i should mention is that the touchpad area um, i for whatever reason uh, i tend to um, keep my hands kind of close to the touchpad sometimes so when i'm using it on my lap sometimes it's a little bit sensitive and it'll jerk the touchpad screen around that may or may not be an issue for you I like the ability to use the S Pen um, when navigating if I want to, but in reality, I really haven't used it that much. Maybe because I haven't gotten used to uh, being able to write on a screen coming and using the Mac for the most part, even though I do use an iPad Pro with the uh, Apple Pencil. But I do love the ability to use the S Pen, and I use that uh, for taking notes. This is quite responsive. And it is Wacom-based technology, which, in my opinion, is the best uh, because, well, it is uh, based on magnetic technology, which does not require um, any battery or power or charging um, in the pen. So that allows the pen to be a little bit cheaper 
and you don't have to worry about charging it like do with the Apple Pencil. And Wacom has been around for a long time, so you could use any number of pens on there uh, on, on, on this unit. So you could use any of the other S pens. However, this one is 0.7 millimeters and it is super responsive and it even has tilt response. Okay. Uh, the thing is the pen that's included in here is really skinny. It's it's too skinny, and that's because uh, look how look how thin the notebook is. All right, let's take a look at some performance numbers. I ran PC Mark 10, and we get a total PC Mark 10 score of 4,155. So let's break this down a little bit about the detail scores. And I got to say that uh, during my course of the two, I'm on the third week now of using the Samsung Note 9 Pro 15, I've been very satisfied with the performance given the price, the features, and the quality of everything in the construction. It's just been really, really good. So a 4,155 is a pretty darn good score. It's kind of what I was expecting. Um, as you can see, the scores right here for the essentials, 8,061, and then we have productivity at 7,200. This is a fantastic machine for students, by the way, um, also with the addition of the S Pen and also really great for uh, just general computing. This is really fantastic. Um, the only thing holding it back, of course, is the digital content creation score, which only scores a 3,356. And I want to say that it's due to the rendering mostly and the video editing score that really brings it down. And that's because it's only got a dual core processor. It might be a Core i7 latest uh, i7-7500U, but um, that is only a dual core. And you really want more cores when you're doing stuff like rendering, right? So here's the breakdown of the scores. Uh, as you can see, the video editing scores uh, are all right here. Um, spreadsheets does pretty fantastically. Writing scores, of course, loading documents. It's really peppy too, by the way, even though it's only a 256 uh, gigabyte um, SATA 3 connection. And here's the web browsing score. Of course, it also does very well. So, of course, I showed you the basic system information earlier. Um, it's right here. You have the Intel graphics 620 plus the 540 Radeon graphics. And yeah, so that that is pretty much the full on test. All right. So that that's that's the score. All right. Now let's go back and let's take a closer look at this unit. Um, here's the information directly from Samsung. I should mention that this laptop is only available through Best Buy at this point in time. Best Buy and directly from Samsung. If it does end up showing on Amazon, I'll definitely link it down below. But those are your only two options at this point. And in fact, I actually know Best Buy has a special offer going on this right now for students. I think you get an extra $125 or $175 off, which really makes this a no-brainer. All right, next major thing everyone wants to find out about is about the S Pen. The S Pen is fantastic. This is not the first notebook with the S Pen, and I just took the S Pen out of notebook, and whenever you do, this is what pops up. There's a little control panel here on the right-hand side where you can then choose Create Note, View All Notes, Smart Select, Screen Write, or Show Window. All right, this is for, I believe, for presentation. All right, if you want to do an extended screen um, show, uh, I think that's that's pretty useful if you're doing a presentation. So that actually goes away um, after you select something, but to bring it back up, I just have to press the single button, the single and only button on the S Pen, and it brings it right back up there. And then I can go ahead and choose another one of these nice options here. All right, Create Note is allows you to go ahead and dribble draw notes or draw. All right, it's actually pretty useful um, to take notes, um, but I prefer OneNote. OneNote is fantastic. You can get that for free through Microsoft um, and the App Store, and that's what I recommend if you're going to be taking some serious notes. But this is nice for a quick jot of notes. What it'll do is it will actually save it um, as an image in your picture folder by default you have a bunch of different colors and stuff to selecting. And I want to say they really improved the S Pen quite a bit. I love Wacom technology 
and I use it for uh, photo editing. Uh, maybe not as much as I, I used to um, because I don't do so much edits on my photos now. I usually just take it as is. Um, but uh, when you needed to, when I needed to, Wacom tablet technology was the best and that's what this, this particular notebook is based on. All right and I believe also on some other notebooks. The first one that I've used with Samsung was actually the uh, Ativ 9 or Book 9 and that actually worked out pretty pretty well. So as you can see that that's all pretty great. Um, I'm just gonna do done save. I can do it a title. I can I guess I can categorize it but um, I I'm just don't use this tool extensively. I definitely use OneNote more. So if I save it, it ends up showing here. You can see some of my uh, previous uh, test sample notes. They'll all show up here. You can categorize it. And um, yeah, I guess that's pretty useful, but it's only good um, in Samsung. I suppose you can export it and print it. So I can print it as PDF and export it. That could be useful, but um, generally if I'm going to create a note, that's just going to be a quick little note, kind of like a sticky note. Um, second option is, of course, to view the notes that um, I've written on it. As you can see, I haven't really used that feature that much because I, again, prefer OneNote. Smart Selects is nice. It's like the snipping tool. And um, if you know the Windows snipping tool, that's how you go ahead and take screenshots on there. So I did that, and then now I can do some screenshots. Right, so this is the, um, let's call this, it's this, this thing right here. See, so I can annotate on whatever I see on the screen or capture on a screen with any number of these tools here um, on the top right hand side and you know I can I can extract text which I don't use um, that's basically you can copy copy text that was on that screenshot so that's why it's called smart select I can crop it down even more if I needed to and finally um, I can share that and I say that's great there's different options I can share it to and export it to. So think of that uh, a similar feature to what you might be able to do on a smartphone or actually a, a Samsung Note device. And then finally, of course, I can save this. And uh, you see when I click on save, all it does is it saves it as an item in the pictures. All right, so I can close that out. And finally, um, the final option is screen write where I can just jot directly um, on the screen. It just takes the whole screen there so rather than smart select um, where I can go ahead and choose this actually just does the entire screen so right there I just did the entirety of the screen at the time when I clicked it so those are the uh, built-in note options I know some people were wondering about what those things are about there are not too many videos about it that's it that's that's what's integrated in there but um, because you have these things, it's great. It's all through Samsung. There are other apps that you can do through the Windows App Store. Or just the store now, I guess. And they will actually recommend some of them that you can go ahead and try out. So um, on this bottom right-hand side here, there's something called the Windows Work Airspace. You can use the basic built-in Windows stuff. Um, so this is not unique to Samsung. You'll find this on you know, Microsoft Surface tablets and other tablets as long as you have the latest update of Windows 10. It'll look like this, right? So um, I can go ahead and access that. And then one way is um, suggested already here is that you can shop for pen apps in there. So it'll, it'll recommend some uh, apps that you can try. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't tried a lot of these. Uh, typically, when I'm using the pen, I'd be only using it in something like Photoshop or some Adobe applications. I did download several of these, and I hope to be trying these out sometime later, but only after I get a better, thicker pen than the one that's included in here. As you can see, it was really um, kind of slim and not very great in uh, yeah, uh, for writing. All right. So they got that nice, fancy Stadler one. Uh, that you can you can purchase. It's quite pricey. Um, one thing that I will try is just to get a wake on one and see how well that works. Stadler uh, Stylus Samsung. Right, so there's that nice one that is um, right here. So it's noted on the verge. Uh, well, actually, it says it's only $40 right now. That's not bad. I'll probably have to try that out. Well, this is designed for the Samsung Galaxy Note. However, the pencil stylus version is good for 
um, for the Samsung one here. Okay, next up, let's take a look at some other special Samsung settings that is unique to the Samsung line. All right, so uh, this little icon down here in the bottom is uh, Samsung Quick Settings. And this allows me to go ahead and uh, go ahead and, and do some unique settings for uh, the Samsung. Auto booting, this basically means that when you open up the screen, it will automatically boot into Windows in case you shut it off. USB charging on and off, this controls whether or not uh, your laptop can serve as a battery. Yeah, so it's got two USB 3 ports, and if you turn on USB charging online, if you need to plug in your phone, um, you will be able to quick charge or charge directly from the USB port off of the battery that's inside. Maximum performance mode, pretty self-explanatory, just basically ramps up everything. Uh, outdoor mode really brightens up the screen, like really, really bright. So I know the screen is rated at 350 nits. I think this boots boots it up to 400. I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on that, but it is definitely really bright. You definitely don't want to use this sometime indoors. Obviously, that's why it's called outdoor mode. Video HDR. I'm not a fan of these type of settings, but if you try it out, you're watching a video, and you know it'll it'll make sure the blacks are black and and the whites are white and and whatnot. Um, you know, definitely try it out. Okay, um, there are some other settings that you can go ahead and add on here as well. Um, why not um, add them all on there so that you can have uh, full on uh, a quick con convenient settings on here on one screen. So we'll go over that. Uh, battery extender is actually a really great option. I see this on certain, uh, certain, as you can see on the bottom right hand side, if you turn on the battery ext uh, extender, Basically, it keeps the battery around the 85 percentile, which will extend the battery life uh, of your laptop because it won't stress it out by stretching it out all the way to 100 percent. But um, and so if you if if you basically keep your laptop plugged in all the time or you make sure that it only charges up 85 percent, your battery is going to last a lot longer. OK, so that that's what this is about. So if you plan on keeping your laptop for long haul and you're and you 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 definitely don't want to have to pay for new batteries all the time, you turn it on and off. I will say after opening up this laptop, uh looks like the battery is fairly serviceable. If you can get if you can get a replacement, um looks like it's it's pretty easy to replace. So that's it's something that's not bad. Uh display color allows you to set up different modes depending on what it is you're doing. I keep it in photo editing mode mostly because I have the screen calibrated, right? Uh, outdoor mode we already talked about, video HDR we already talked about, sound effects you have different ones to choose from um, in terms of how it manages the sound coming out from it. At this point I will say the speakers on here are pretty bad. Uh, definitely was disappointing and I think this was something that they could have done something to improve but they didn't. It's just really not good. Not the worst I've sound, but a far cry from, let's say, the Apple MacBook. Um, not the MacBook Pro, not the old MacBook Pros, but the MacBook, which is pretty phenomenal. All right, um, you can control the keyboard backlighting here as well. Uh, if you do the key toggle from the keyboard, there are actually uh, low, medium, and high and off. Um, from here, it looks like you have a little bit more control over it. So you can set that specifically. Beauty camera, this basically tries to smooth out your face. This is pretty common in Samsung uh, cell phones for the selfie uh, webcam or selfie, the front-facing screen camera. Um, I know girls love turning this on a lot because it's it makes them look a lot younger. So that's, that's that. That's built into the Samsung here. So I guess that is a um, nice little feature for some of you. The auto-booting, we talked about that already. Um, the silent mode reduces the fan noise that users can use without hearing any noise. Um, it's it's not bad. I actually never had to use this because this laptop is fairly silent. There are two fans in there, but I can barely hear them even when uh, I tried playing some games on here. Okay, so the, here's the USB charging. So it's explained over there. The power management is actually explained here with the maximum performance mode. There's an FN plus Q. Uh, key setting that you can go ahead and use to uh, toggle that on and off, right? Network, um, 
this oh this lays out the best access points around close by so this is the Wi-Fi that I have close by display settings gives you a little bit of information on here audio let you know about the standard sound effects keyboard input and then the beauty camera alright so those are specific Samsung settings that you will find um, unique here luckily um, I have found that this laptop doesn't have too much in terms of uh, too much in terms of bloatware I mean you can definitely see some of them here um, but uh, but the bloatware is uh, pretty pretty minimal um, you'll notice that I've installed quite a few things in here um, over the course of the three weeks I have the whole Adobe suite uh, updated and installed and I've been using that and let's see I installed Diablo to do the testing this runs Diablo just fine by the way and you know I installed the whole office suite as well which also works out pretty well and a few other tweaks and utilities in here so I customized the windows uh, the, the windows uh, around um, in here just a little bit okay now at this point I'll say the screens fantastic it is it might only be 1080p it covers almost all of sRGB I didn't quite get a hundred percent sRGB I think I got 96 97 percent sRGB so that that's still pretty good and of course Samsung manufactures screens and they um, they they uh, did a really great job the it's it's good it's 1080p only though but um, when I use this side to side with it's a, it's a really good 1080p we'll put it that way so the screens fantastic all right now um, what else did people uh, typically have questions about um, yeah other than that it's it's basically a um, you know there, there's no other special features about it that I feel like I need to share the S Pen's fantastic it works out really well with um, with OneNote and the pen app so far on here I'm a little bit disappointed though that Microsoft has actually um, uh, that Microsoft actually did uh, did away with some writing features on Microsoft Outlook but that's in a whole totally other separate video All right so so again I recommend using OneNote for all your notes it's the best um, yeah okay so so OneNote's great Again, everything's really peppy, really fast. Uh, let's show off a. Um, let's go ahead and show off uh, uh, Elder Scrolls Online. So this is passable, right? It's it's not. I mean the um, the GPU uh, AMD 940 is passable. You're not going to get super mad frame rates, but you're going to be able to play basically all the Blizzard games just fine. And um, you know you'll you'll get roughly maybe 30 30 frames per second, uh, roughly around there, um, on pretty high settings. So I have to apologize about the section where I was trying to record at the same time while playing some games. You can take my word at it that it does a decent job. This is not a gaming notebook, but for something this thin and skinny with that battery life, it's actually pretty decent. Now comparing with a MacBook Pro. Um, I find that this is actually lighter, and I'm comparing this to the MacBook um, generation 2012 all the way up through the 2015 generation. That was before they switched to USB-C. I do miss out on the uh, SD card slot, which is obviously available on my uh, unit here. And uh, so that, that's one thing I miss. The screen anti-glare coating is much better on the MacBook Retina, and is as, as is the screen. Uh, because just because of the resolution but the sRGB value on this is actually higher than my MacBook from 2012 so I as a MacBook user um, I think that this comes really close and because Windows 10 has gotten so much better over the years if you are on the fence about whether or not you want to get the latest MacBook Pro uh, retina 15 and spend so much money on it versus spending 12.99 if I had to do it over again and this was out and available and I was already a Windows user and I didn't know what the Mac was all about I'd go ahead and get this plus you get the S Pen which is going to be great for um, 
taking the place of a tablet that you might want to write or take notes on. So I give this thumbs up. I definitely think you should check it out. And if you're a student, get that nice discount from Best Buy. And uh, let me know what you think um, after you get it. Let me know if you, if you really like it or if you have any problems with it. All right, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.